Hello friends, do you love bugs? Why? Why do we enjoy deviating from the path? Why do we, in a sense, become restless? To answer these questions, let's explore the geometry of symptoms. I propose an exercise from the book Geopsychology. Inhale and exhale slowly, feel your body. Imagine, if you can, that instead of being a human, you were the entire universe. What would awareness mean for you then? How would you self-reflect? To have immediate awareness, you would have. To possess some implicit form of duality, your attention should be drawn to something about yourself. Something should irritate you. To truly capture your attention, something should seem very wrong or bother you. Sensory awareness emerges, and before you know it, a bug causes an itch. Then you feel compelled to scratch and contemplate the itch, whether you like it or not. Suddenly, you are no longer just a calm, harmonious and changing universe, but a universe evolving into bugs, itches, and hands to scratch. Continue breathing and listen to the words. Another exercise with bugs awaits you shortly. Ancient Japanese believe that there are bugs inside our minds that create ideas and feelings. In his chapter, Awareness of the Path, Arnold Mendel writes that bugs are crucial for guiding consciousness. Perhaps that's why we need to deviate from the path from time to time, or quite often, to use Lao Tzu's expression. Bugs and itching make us scratch and ultimately lead to the awareness of who we really are or who we can be. At that moment, the itch stops. I think most of us would only briefly ponder who needs bugs before getting bored, and then it all starts again. Consciousness is a process that requires bugs. Sometimes a bug is just a dream, sometimes a symptom, a person, or an event in the world. The essence is that, at least during our physical life, the itch or irritation has a creative nature. Perhaps that's why astrophysicist Stephen Hawking said that the universe compels its existence with a tickling from the vacuum field of zero energy. Emptiness or harmony may not be the ultimate goal, as in some spiritual traditions. In reality, due to the uncertainty principle, there is no absolute emptiness without a tickling. This aligns with what I know about people. Emptiness is a fleeting state. Bugs are always present. There will always be something, or someone bothering an individual or a group. In your relationships, something new will constantly emerge, requiring contemplation, perhaps because these relationships seek self-understanding as the grand myth of life strives for awareness. Detachment and enlightenment, in principle, represent brief states of understanding your grand path. They fundamentally cannot last long. Symptoms disappear, but something else arises again. Healing is a fleeting thing. Each of us is a curious cosmos, attempting to understand itself. A true facilitator, someone who loves to follow nature, follows the bugs of their own body, relationships, group, and the world. They irritate him, and then he transforms into their essence or grand path, 
and the bugs become his teachers. Bugs, apparently, are immortal. That's why symptoms persist or return. Not simply because you are oblivious. It happens because you are a universe, in the process of consciousness. In other words, deviation from the path occurs. We enjoy deviating from the path and need it. In a sense, something deep within us wants to be irritated and deviate from the path to understand itself. Imagine that when self-awareness reflects, the universe tries to establish contact with our mind. In this sense, consciousness is the result of a repeating sequence of sensory events in which something cosmic tries to reach our everyday human consciousness. When you become aware of the state of your mind, you may notice that just before you become interested in something, what you are about to be interested in kind of plays with you. It seems to captivate or seize your attention. In a sense, the universe flirts with us. It constantly pesters us with small things before we even notice them. Bugs or flirtations are particles of the universe trying to achieve awareness and consciousness. In quantum physics, before measurement can take place, there is an exchange of flirtations, or what physicists call quantum waves, going back and forth between the observer and the object, the past and the future. NASA physicist John Kramer first suggested that quantum waves can be understood as a kind of communication moving forward in time as proposal waves and backward in time from the object as echo waves. This transactional interpretation of quantum physics reflects what we know about ourselves, specifically that the experience of sensory awareness tries to capture our attention before we even realize we wanted to look at it. Before you can observe anything, that is, before consciousness occurs, these waves self-reflect. Before we speak to each other, sensory awareness connects us. Understanding sensory connections as the basis of relationships is crucial because otherwise, in everyday reality, we are under the impression that the other is only there outside, not part of the field of consciousness in which we all live. If we are not aware of this sensory connection, we experience another person as being only from the outside irritating us. Now, Arnold Mindel's exercise, empty mind, bug in the mind. Perhaps Hawking might be right about the universe compelling or awakening itself to existence. However, most of us can confidently say that we are often irritated by something trying to reach our everyday consciousness. I suggest testing this bug theory through the following inner work. In the exercise below, I will ask you to notice what irritates your body. It might turn out at this little bug or almost nothing holds the wisdom of dreams. Are you ready? Empty mind, let's begin. Sit as quietly as possible for some time, letting your everyday mind settle. Wait until you have a kind of empty mind or beginner's mind. Then use your lucid attention and explore this emptiness. 
Notice what you feel, observe. The slightest thing that touches your body or sticks to it. If there are several, let your inner light determine which bug to focus on. Now catch this bug and name it. Was it a sensation? What does this bug or sensation want? So to speak, what is its direction? Experiment, obey, and follow this little bug. Let it guide you until it communicates its direction and message to you. What is this bug doing there? And what does it truly want? Continue to follow it and inquire of it until it gives you a clear explanation of itself. In what way is the bug trying to create or recreate the world? Your world? Your direction? In a sense, the awareness of the path sticks to us before we understand it. Recall a recent dream and see if there are new worlds and directions in it that the bug is trying to create. When I finish speaking, I will ask you to continue listening to the sounds and being aware of your bugs. From Hunanzi, Yinshen, to become a god, cosmology, sacrifice and self-divination in early China, long, long ago, before the existence of heaven and earth, there was only a figure without form. Unclear, dark, immense, and deep. No one knows its ways. There were two spirits Shen born together. They arranged heaven. They directed earth. So boundless, no one knows its end or limit. So abundant, no one knows where it stops. Then they separated and became yin and yang, divided and became the eight supports. The firm and the yielding completed each other, and on this basis, Many things were formed. Murky key became insects, and purified key became humans.
We hope you enjoyed our assortment of sounds. To stay tuned for future releases, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and please leave a comment about which sounds evoke the strongest emotions for you. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed these sounds, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the like button and share your thoughts in the comments. Let's create auditory magic together. Thank you for being with us until the very end. If these sounds brought you joy, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share your thoughts in the comments. We always read your comments, which serve as a guide for creating new content. Your interaction is important to us. I love you.